All right. Okay. So today le today's lecture is about brushless DC uh, drive. Uh, we talked briefly about BLDCs in the last, uh, uh, when was it, Monday? The last lesson, right? Um, I think I confused you a little bit, and that's based on the feedback that I got from a few of you. So the first slide is about clarifying that 15% difference, right? I just want to make sure that we are clear over there. I think I made one mistake, and some of you noticed that. So let's just make sure that everybody gets the calculation over there, right? Let me just first say that what is the lecture about. So we're going to firstly show that 15% once again. So we are on the same page, okay? And then we're going to move forward and uh, kind of describe how the whole BLDC drive uh, operates, uh, whole effect signals. I'm uh, going to explain a little bit about that, how we use them. And then we have a setup that we're going to run at the end of the lecture. Then the build DC operation, how the whole cycle goes around, and how we move among the phases and what it really means on the motor side or generator, right? Then three-phase inverter, how we use three-phase inverter, the, the hardware, once we know the whole effect sensors, right? Then we're going to do PWM, just simple as is, and see how is that similar to permanent magnet DC machine, and then we're going to show the, the uh, other uh, types of BLDC, and at the end we're going to show the current control, okay? So the first slide is just a clarification from last time, sorry about that, my bad, I just didn't intend to confuse you, but it seems like I did. This is what we had. So once again, our BLDC is trapezoidal drive, right? So we have this trapezoidal back EMF. And if this is our phase, uh, the value of the amplitude of back EMF is EA, right? And it's over here. Don't forget, this is in time. But the amplitude is EA, and the amplitude here is IA. Okay, and if we have that for each of these six sectors that we uh, uh, explained about last time, our torque we said was, or power actually, which is easier, was that the power in time was this times this, right, plus in time, EB in time plus right, for all three phases. But we said that in one of those segments, we actually have, let's say in segment one, our power is IA times EA. Plus, which is what I missed last time, I thought it's kind of a, uh, uh, easy to understand, we have the same thing over here, because this is our minus EB, and minus EA, so when you do minus EB, sorry, minus, then you actually essentially get that your power per cycle is two times this, right? That's my bad. I miss that too, right? You probably noticed that. So when you now go back to the, the equation, and we said from this equation, what we have over here is that our I M was, you do this, then our M was 2 over square root of 3 times IP, right? And then if you want to do the power ratio between the two, right, say the power of Trap drive over the power of, uh, how we call the other one, AC drive, right? So that will be 2 times E times I over 3, because 3 phases. And over there we had, uh, uh, let's say, uh, V over square root of 2 times uh, uh, I. So this one is I P. This one is I M over square root of 2, and that's once you s change over here, that's how you get uh, 115. 
Okay, so clarification is over here. My bad, sorry about that. I didn't take into account the negative one for the other phase. So you have two times E times I per cycle. And that one is always constant. And the torque is exactly the, the power over speed, right? Okay? So let's move on now. Sorry about that. Let's move on. So, we said that we are using BLDC machines, trap drive machines, because of two big things. First one is that 15% that we think we're going to get more than a synchronous if the losses are the same. Second one is it's very, very simple to use. It's very easy to use it. Once you know how to use Hall Effect, it's behaving exactly as PMDC. That's what we're going to show today. So how do you use Hall Effect sensors? This is pretty much... So, once again, the same picture from before. Hall effect sensors are usually on the back uh, of the motor, of the machine, of the BLDC drive, right? And what you have over here, you have a couple of wires, and I'll show that here today. You have three wires, A, J, B, C, and you have uh, VCC, which is usually 5 volts and ground. So you're bringing those to your microcontroller, and pretty much what you have is this. These are the signals, right, the, the green ones. H, A, H, B, H, C. And how are they positioned in respect to the, to the phase back EMF? This is phase back EMF. Keep that in mind. Because some data sheets are showing you phase back EMF. Some are showing you line to line. So don't be confused that they're sometimes showing different stuff. Make sure that you know what you're looking at. So if this is how your whole effect signal look like, then how you would use it for your microcontroller logic? That's something that we're going to show today, right? So we said that we want to have our current over here, right? And to stop somewhere here. And that we want our current over here and to stop somewhere here, right? And for the C, we, this is where we need our current. So how are you going to use the green signal? Well, I'll tell you, it's very simple. All you need to do is to say that you guys know Boolean logic, right? All you need to do is to say Hall... A and not whole B, right? And this is how you're going to get the, the current for phase A, right? And the same going to be for B, the same going to be for C. You follow the logic? So if you have those three inputs, Hall effects to your microcontroller, you just run a simple block that is pure Boolean logic, and that's how you're going to convert those signals into useful uh, uh, signals for your driver, for your MOSFET driver, right? So, pretty much, once we do that, all we have is our, it's PMDC, right? At that point, once you do the pure Boolean logic with those three input Hall effect signals, then all you are dealing with is permanent magnet DC machine. That's the reason why they call it BLDC, brushless DC. So what did we have before, and this is the animation that shows, is uh, before our PMDC had that commutator, remember that? So on our rotor we had the, the bindings, and PM was outside. Right? PM was our field winding, where armature was our uh, uh, rotor binding. So we had to have that commutator that is actually sort of rectifying the current of the, of the DC machine, right? So now, all that's happening is now that we are putting magnets on, on rotor side, and our armature is, is on the stator. And we are just using pure Hall effect sensors to tell us which sector we are at, and we are just having simple DC machine. Right? Do you agree? All of you? This, is, this animation just tells you how you move from PMDC to BLDC. From now on, logic is the same as DC, once you know the Hall effect sensors, right? So, if this is your three-phase BLDC drive, right? And over here is your, uh, uh, how you call it, the physical representation. So you have your winding A, B, C, and you have permanent magnets. And this is how you, the field looks like from the rotor side, right? This is how we're going to move counterclockwise 
and go through all those sectors and at the same time mind over here on the picture how we have to excite which phases we have to excite in order to have the current that we are looking at, right? So this is our uh, sector one. So in sector one he said this is phase A, this is phase B, this is phase C. And over here you see it, it's A, B, C. So pretty much we have current going this direction, right? Positive on A and negative on C. See that? And this is how the vector, the field vector looks like. So very next sector, we're just going to excite now phase B instead of C. Right? Very next one, we're going to excite B and C. And so on and so on. And you, you see how we are kind of moving around counterclockwise on the, on the machine representation, right? Right? So once you figure out, once again, that's, very, that's a crucial point. Once you figure out your whole effect sensors that all they tell you is which sector you are at at the moment, from that moment on, you're dealing with a DC machine. That's the beauty of BLDC. That's why it's so simple and everybody likes to use it for simple, robust, low-cost applications. No need to play with the sinusoidal waveforms, you know, space vector, all of that. You just don't need to do that. And it's still AC machine at the end of the day, but you just control it as a DC. Right? Cool. Any questions so far? This is very important. Once you understand this, from now on, you're just going to use the same logic that you did a month ago for DC. Question? Yeah, so with this, all you're doing is doing the control of the current direction and which phase the current is being applied to. You don't change the voltage, you don't change anything, you're just doing your three-level switching gate? Right now, that's correct. What I'm trying to show you is how to convert from DLDC to the pure DC, and all we are doing is we're just reading the whole effect sig signals and, and knowing which sector we are at, so we know which switches to, to, by to use. You mean position, right? Correct. It's pure position, correct. I'm not still at the point where I'm going to show you how to do the, the voltage, which we need for DL, uh, DC motors, but it, in a few slides you're going to see that as well. So I'm just trying to explain you how to play with the whole effect signals. Okay? So this is how we go through all the sectors, right? So in a motoring mode, we know that all we need to understand here is that we have to figure out which sector we are at and at that point if we know which sector we are at that means that we know exactly which, uh, uh, what is the back EMF waveform look like and then we know how to apply the current so we're going to apply the current only at the point where our back EMF is uh, uh, constant either plus maximum value or minus maximum value. How do you do generative mode? Again, it's very simple. You just don't excite the machine such that it has positive current, but just negative. So in this case, this is the pure comparison on this graph, how you run generative mode. I instead of uh, uh, switching the upper switch on your inverter, which we're going to show later on, you just run the lower switch. And you will see on next couple of slides how is that running your generator, how is that building your current, which sort of we had with the choppers before. That the only difference with choppers is that we had four switches because that's all we need for four quadrant drive. Now we have six just because we have six sectors. But the logic is the same. That's where I'm getting here. Right? Understand this? And this is how you can run... Uh, speed uh, counterwise, counterclockwise, uh, you can build up the current the way you want. Very important thing is that you know which sector you're at. Right? So, these are, this is the hardware we all know. And this is uh, how we're going to show it today. This is pretty much how we have it connected. So, this is actually representing our motor. Right? This is our 
PLDC, Trap Drive, Trap Machine. So we're going to have three sensors, we're going to have whole effect logic that will tell us the sector information, and then we have microcontroller. The first uh, experiment we're going to do is microcontroller just recognizing which sector it, it's at, and then just uh, firing all those switches. So it's going to pretty much convert all of this into PMDC uh, sort of a I don't know how to say, like, machine representation. Right? That's what we're going to show. And you're going to see how the waveforms look like. Right? Then, once I, this is what I got from the simulation, but we're going to see that live today here on the setup. But pretty much what you're going to see is that the current waveforms, these are the the phase current waveforms, this is A, right? This is A, this is B, this is C. This is how they, they look like. And the effect of that is that this is the torque, though. So this is torque. The effect of that is that we have certain torque ripple. See that? It's our torque ripple. So that's one of the problems with BLDC when you compare them with the PMDC. PMDC, you probably noticed that month ago, there is no torque ripple over there, right? If you simply apply whole effect signals without controlling current slash without controlling torque, but you're just trying to use whole effects and just simply fire those switches, this is exactly what you're going to get, right? And this is what we're going to see today. So in this case, um, if we don't have any PWM, any duty cycle over here applied, right? This is just pure logic. This is just pure bo Boolean logic. So what we can do, though, is not only that we're going to have Hall effect logic that will tell us the sector information and run that through microcontroller, which is firing the switches. But we can somehow introduce PWM. Now, that's the question from like five, ten minutes ago um, about the voltage. Why are we introducing PWM? Do you remember in, in DC machines, whenever you wanted to change the voltage, which is essentially changing the speed of the drive, you introduce PWM. So if you have power supply of, say, 100 volts that is running your PMDC, you have a speed of, say, 100 RPM. And you say, okay, what if I apply 50 volts? Well, you should be at 50 RPM. How do I apply, I apply 50 volts? Well, apply PWM, 0.5 duty cycle, right? So playing with the duty cycle from 0 to 100 gives you leverage of changing the voltage that you apply across the phases, right? Which, again, translates to speed. Same here, right? Same here. You can apply PWM, right? Did you say you had PWM, a golf cart, and... Sorry? Oh, <laughs> okay. It smells like a midterm to me. <laughs> okay, good. So where I'm getting at is you can, you can use a simple PWM control for BLDC drive as is. So you use whole effects from here. And how are you going to introduce PWM, though? That might be a good question. So, well, you know what? The signals that you have from, from your microcontroller that are going to switches, just end them with your PWM. So you just end them, right? Simple logic. And so on and so on. Try that in your simulation. I tried it. This is pretty much what I got. <laughs> so... Once you introduce a PWM, you can start playing with your uh, magnitude of your current. You are playing essentially with the magnitude of the voltage, which has an effect on your current, which is affecting your torque. Here is your torque. So, you will see that the torque is, has less ripple for a given load, of course. But this is pretty much a duty, I think, 0.8, and then if you increase the duty, you have a little bit of 
higher torque because load was pretty high. But the waveforms are very similar to what we had before, right? Not much different. So we still have a problem of controlling the current properly, so we have that flat current that is beneath the maximum back EMF that we really want to have. Because at that point, we have zero torque ripple, right? Remember our objective? To have a constant current if possible, right? Not to have a waveform like this that is kind of going up and down. Okay? So let, let's see how we're going to get there. Before I go there, let me just put this. Um, remember tor torque speed characteristic that, that I showed uh, on Monday? Um, and it's pretty much the same as uh, uh, PMDC. We said that this is due to the thermal limit, and then this is due to the voltage limit. And then we can go uh, left and right here in both motoring and generating mode, right? So this is pretty much how you use your PWM. Same logic as with DC machines. If you apply your PWM, lower duty cycle is going to bring you toward the, the y-axis, right? You are not applying as much voltage as you could. So you are limiting your torque speed characteristic. More PWM duty you apply, you are moving toward right. You are getting toward your uh, limit of the voltage, right? And there is a catch. Uh, it's called uh, phase advancing or field weakening, uh, meaning if you want to speed up uh, faster than your nominal speed is, you can, with BLDC, actually uh, move further and start switching earlier than you regularly would with regular P BLDC control, right? And that will bring you to the phase advance region over here. That is rarely used in the industry just because at that point you need more than whole effect sensors. At that point you need encoder because you need to know precise position of the rotor. Remember, whole effect sensors just give you six signals that tells you in which sector you are. So, and they are 60 electrical degrees apart, right? So if you want to advance, let's say, 30 degrees, then you, you don't know what 30 degrees means. How are you going to figure it out? In that case, you use encoder. So that's what some of the applications in, in um, aerospace, they're using very precise encoders, and they can run these BLDCs twice, sometimes five times the rated speed. I just want you to be aware of that. And that technique is called field weakening. Okay? But you cannot use a simple Hall effect sensors. So this is your torque speed characteristics. This is exactly where your PWM fits in, right? See that? If you apply duty of 100, you're exactly on the, on the slope here, on your nominal curve, right? So, let's try to get to the holy grail of BLDC, and that's having a very flat, nice current waveform so that we don't have torque ripple. Because if we don't control the current such that it's flat, then uh, we have significant torque ripple, and that's not good for BLDC, right? Let's see how we do that. So we need to do some sort of a current control, okay? No problem, let's do it. Well, what do I need for current? I need current sensors, right? Okay, cool. I'm going to put current sensors in each phase, as you see. So now, not only that I have whole effect logic that tells me the sector, no, I have three current sensors that are going to tell me exactly what's the current at any moment in any sector, right? So if you put that in a controller, then you can play with the logic such that you can fire those switches so that you have pre-flat current. That's exactly what we want to have. Are those current CTs? Sorry? CTs? Uh, uh, yes. Those are current sensors. Let me write that down. But are they most often current transducers? Or are they... What do you mean? I don't understand the question. Uh, inline ammeters, right? They're magnetic. Uh, remember the very first uh, lesson that we had, the very first presentation, I showed you a couple of those 
uh, simple current sensors, and they are whole effect based. The LEM and you know all of those companies. Honeywell has a bunch of those. Very simple. You're going to see them here today, so we can take a look. Who, you know what's the output and how they work. But we just place three of those in three phases so that we monitor the current, right? So, if we have that and we use that information for our logic, then we can pretty much show how we build up the current in the motor so that we have pretty much constant uh, current magnitude for the sector that we are at. And over here I showed you that on the generator uh, model, because I already showed you how the motor works with a three-phase circuit, so that you kind of have the same logic for motor. Okay? So pretty much what's our objective is, we have the hardware over here, right? Those are those six switches. And over here is a representation of the first quadrant. How I want to build the current so that I have generator in the first sector. Okay? So what do I do? If I turn on my switches S2 and S3, this is how I'm going to build up the current. And if this is my back EMF, trapezoidal waveform, this is exactly how my current is going to start rising up in a negative uh, value, but it's going to start rising up, right? So, if this is the value I want to be at, that's some um, I star, all I'm going to do, I'm going to switch them off. And once I switch off those S2, S3, because my machine is inductive uh, 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 load, right, then, then the current cannot uh, just diminish, right? It, it should go somewhere. So it's going to go through those diodes D1 and D4. And guess what? This is going to show in our graph. So it's going to start decreasing in a value. It's negative, though, just because I want to build a generator here, right? But the same is a motor. You just have to use different switches, right? Do you get that? So pretty much what we are trying to do is we are trying to be somewhere here with our current. And we are playing in this very narrow band so that effectively we have a constant current that is exactly beneath our constant back EMF voltage that we want to be at, right? So it's easy from there. All you do is you're just switching this, switching that, switching this, switching that. See how it's building? You want a different value? Well, no, not a problem. Just those S2 and S3, just don't, don't turn them on that long. And then your, your current is going to be significantly less. So all you have to do is build a simple hysteresis logic in your controller that will look at the phase current and look at your reference. Are you above that? Yes. Okay. Switch them off there. Are you below? Oh, yes. Okay. Switch them on. And you have to know what to switch on and off, right? You have to know the combo of the switches. And that, gives, that comes from your Hall effect sensors. That's it. Have it done. Boom. Got it? That's a very simple, very robust BLDC control, current hysteresis control. It's in use everywhere nowadays. Everywhere. Questions? Question? So when you switch between uh, sec sectors? Yes. Like the current through C is ramped up? Yes. You just, you know, turn it off, do you, but it'll probably go through a diode. Do you still take that into account as you're ramping up A and B? Uh, that will diminish itself because it's in active phase. Okay. So, like, the leakage inductance is relatively small? Correct. Okay. Correct. And it will eventually diminish. It will be inactive very soon. So does, okay. So it's kind of negligible? Yes. All right. Yes. All you care is what is the sector you're at and what are the phases you're using. There are only two active. One is always inactive. So when you switch from that sector to another, then one of the two phases that were active is now inactive, but the current will diminish over there itself. 
it's closing, it's going through the diet, through that trivialing diet, but it's negligible, so you don't pretty much care about that. There are some control strategies that even take that into account, and they even bring that current right away down, but that's beyond the, the course right now. There are a lot of different control strategies for BLDC, but I want you to understand the basic one. Everything starts from here, right? So you got my logic how we went through the presentation. So firstly, I showed you how to use pure whole effect sensors and just build the logic so you can control BLDC as a simple DC machine. The problem there was we had significant torque ripple because our current waveform is not what we really want to be. Here's some ripple going up and down, right? So we said, okay, that's not that good. Let's try with PWM because that's what we try with PMDC. So we applied PWM, helped a little bit, but not in the whole operating range, and it depends on the load. So we said, ooh, okay, I can use PWM, but that's not the performance I'm looking for. I'm looking for a flat current. Okay, this is how you build flat current, right? Clear? Awesome. Thank you. Good. So, so I did the simulation, of course, and this is what we're going to show you today. But this is pretty much how the current uh, waveform for phases A, A, B, and C looks like. So this is, let's say, phase A, phase B, phase C. Um, you probably see the gap over here, and that gap will always be there, and it depends on the inductance of your machine. Smaller the inductance, smaller the gap. Why is it there? Because once you keep in mind there is certain time over here that once you start building up your current, you cannot build it instantaneously just because there is inductance there. Remember that RL circuit from like second, third lecture? So higher the L, longer, longer the time to build up the current. And also depends on the magnitude. Higher the current magnitude, going to take longer time to get there. But this is essentially what you have. And guess what? You have it flat. You still see the, the kind of a band over here, the small ripple. You can control that. Usually that band is, you know, several percent, maybe like two to five percent, really depends. Sometimes you are limited there with the bandwidth of your controller, switching frequency, uh, inductance of the machine. But essentially, you build the whole hysteresis current control and then you tweak it with specific machine, make sure that performance is there. Okay? So we'll see that today. Um, this is pretty much how uh, you can do exactly the same hysteresis control. Um, you can have those hysteresis regulators outside your microcontroller. That's another option. You can have them on the hardware. So you can really be flexible and either use them inside your controller and build like the script or the code like if my reference is higher than you know measured then switch the switches off you know you can build a hysteresis loop inside or you can just put an opums outside your controller and have it more robust that way you don't depends on the bandwidth of the controller right it's instantaneous so your band is significantly smaller so it, but you're losing flexibility to change the band if you need to tweak it. So it's really the drawback of what is the required performance of your drive, right? And then how you would put the, the, the speed loop? Well, no problem. You just put the reference speed. You get the speed from your Hall effect sensors. I mean, it's not really instantaneous speed. You're reading that speed every six, every sector pretty much. Whenever you change the sector, you can measure the time between the changes in the sector, and that's your speed. And then you have that uh, loop, and then you put it through PI, and then you run the, the reference current to your controller. You're good to go. This is your speed build DC drive. It's very easy to build it. That's why everybody's doing it. No need for space factor for three phases, no need for DQ, although that will be on Monday. But these drives are very robust and very low cost, easy to build. Okay? Um, right now, we have plenty of time, so we definitely want to show you the, the, the experiment, the, the test setup, where we want to show you the waveforms 
and make sure that you're familiar with whatever I showed over here and you understand how everything looks like so you can actually build it yourself whenever you want. <laughs> okay? Any questions so far before, before we dive into experiment? Question there? What are some of the operating frequencies for the microcontrollers that are used, like in this BLDC control? Oper you mean switching frequencies or? Uh, like clock frequencies. Oh, clock frequencies. Well, calculations and then all these different things. Computer well, honestly, the, usually they are like from 20 to 70 megahertz clock. And if you are using ARM, we are using here ARM that is 72 megahertz clock, right, Yusuf? The ARM clock, 72. And I think the maximum switching that we could achieve with hysteresis control built in the logic of the controller was maybe 35, 40 kilohertz. That is sufficient usually, no problem, but with some drives, if they are uh, uh, high inductive machines, then you have to go higher switching frequencies. So sometimes you cannot do it in ARM. So you either do that logic, hysteresis logic outside the controller, or you can use FPGA that they have. So again, higher switching frequencies, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when this BLDC was developed, that was 30 years ago, whatever, they figured out. So think about that historically. Like 60 years ago, everybody were using DC machines, right? So everybody knew how to do it, how to load it. The, the torque speed characteristic is simple. It's just one uh, slope. Right? And now when you introduce three-phase AC, that's a completely different scenario. So they said, wow, it would be great if we can use AC and control it exactly the same as we did DC. So the first easy step is to put whole effect sensors, as we are showing. And they didn't have 72 megahertz uh, clocks on their arms there back then. So they were using PIC. So you can, you can even use PIC, simple, very, you know, dollar and a half PIC and, and just do BLDC control and implement exactly the same thing that we showed over here. Once you're st starting to get into really high performance, then you have to move to DQ. It's much easier to have DQ drive. And that's what Yusuf will tell you about more on Monday. So, um, let's firstly uh, try to show the... So the fees are open. Okay, so we can actually... Mm -hmm. Yes, I want to show firstly the the voltage waveforms, the back EMF, and whole effect signals, right? So we can do that. So we can pick one phase and one whole effect. Hmm? You cannot use the same phase because if you want to shoot phase to phase, there is no like ground. Mm -hmm. They're gonna match with the ground of this guy. Mm -hmm. So I can show the phase to phase for each. Okay, I can do that. Okay. It's not a problem. So put it over there in the hole. That's not a good one for hole. You can. Hmm? So what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Let's try. Speed it at the lower speeds. Right? Don't use the left one. Left one is here. Use the right one. You want to spin the right one. Oh. So that's how you power it down? Sorry. Any other questions so far? Mm -hmm. Question there? Yeah, I have a question about the last slide. Uh huh. You uh, say we. We need to use uh, uh, how 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 does the uh, hysteresis regulators works? So, what is a hysteresis regulator? Um, that one reads, in our case, that one reads the actual current signal, the value of the current in the phase, and compares it to to the reference current that we want to be in a phase. And the very simple called slide mode control is just comparing the two, and if one is bigger than the other, just 
gives one, and if it the other one is lower than than the reference, then it gives zero. So it's one zero one zero. The hysteresis one though, he has a band. So you are within the band. You have usually five percent band. So you have a reference, and then if you are uh, 1.05 above the reference, then you switch on. And if you are 0.95 below the reference, then you switch off. So that's the hysteresis is the one with the band. You can make that band being zero. That's in slide mode control. It's a dead band in some ways, right? But so you don't get. It's uh, well, I don't know what what dead band means for you, but dead band usually means that you don't want to have a shoot through through the two switches in the same phase, like, this is not that. That's this is different. It's dead time. Sorry. It's dead time, but someone calls it dead band as well. So uh, this is not a dead band. This is the, the, the uh, hysteresis band. So uh, the band is uh, the, the current report we, we just... Correct. That's exactly right. So bigger the band, bigger the ripple, less the band, less the ripple. Right? But again, it's tied to the switching frequency and the magnitude of the current that you want to have in a circuit. So they're all kind of connected because the, 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 essentially the ripple of the current is the function of all of those. Right? Think about it. If you want to build really high current value, it's going to take for a while to get to that, to build up that current. And then if you start switching on and off, depends how often you switch on and off. If you don't have high switching frequency, then when you switch those off, the current is going to diminish and wait for a while and then on again. Okay. So, let's see. What do we have here? There you go. So, we have to make sure we have the right phase. Uh, let's make sure that we move to the... We just keep. There you go. And now, let's see the camera here, right? There you go. Do you see the camera properly? Good. Okay, good enough. So, let's we'll just make sure that we are looking at the right phase, Yusuf. Um, well, I want it to match the hole. So, do you see the hole? The yellow one is the hole signal, right? And it's as we showed on, the, I think, third or fourth slide, it's, it's 180 degrees high, 180 low, right? And the other one, the pink one, is, yeah, that's perfect. So the pink one is, let me just make sure we have it right. There you go. Just make sure you're okay. So this is how we have it. This is line-to-line -line voltage. So the picture that I showed, the, the slide I showed over there, uh, third or fourth, mind, this is a, uh, there is a phase-back EMF and whole effect. This is now line-to-line -line and whole effect. Okay? And once again, usually in the data sheets, they're going to tell you line-to-line -line because this whole effect and line to line should match. So what are we doing right now? We are just spinning the, the uh, BLDC drive with the PMDC drive. And so the, the back EMFs are over there because the machine is unloaded. And all we see is like whole effect and line to line voltage. And those two should match. So you know that this whole effect is actually applied to the right two phases, right? Question there? So this is line to line. The phase voltage that's line to neutral. What is the difference between these? I'm kind of confused about that. Oh, so we cannot show over here line to neutral just because we don't have neutral, and it's usually what you're not going to have. Now the trick that we can do, and that you can do, is to put three very high resistances and create a virtual neutral point, and then you would have whole effect signal to your phase to neutral, and then you figure out which phase is which whole effect. And that was what was previously plotted in the slides, where you had the phase uh, plus? Yes, that was for the phase, yes, that was for the phase. So that's how you can do that and figure out which whole effects 
goes to which phase. But what I'm trying to tell you is that in your data sheet, when you buy build the seed, they're barely going to tell you phase to neutral. They're always going to tell you uh, line to line or phase to phase. So you have to run this experiment to figure out which whole effect is applied to which phase to phase. Because you can switch the phases, right? So once you figure that out and you check them all three whole effects, then you say, okay, I know what I'm doing now. And then you know how to connect your circuit. This is exactly how you check it, right? And then, of course, you spin it faster, the magnitude of the voltage. Oh, this one. So the magnitude of the voltage is going higher. But the whole effect is always the same, right? You limited the, yeah. So, whole effect doesn't, it's, you know, it's 5 volts, right? Back EMF is the one that is changing the magnitude with the speed, of course. But pretty much they are always the same. They, they, they are aligned. They are locked inside, right? That's the position of your rotor. Right? You get that? Okay, good. So, once you know that, then you have to build a simple logic in your controller that will just take those six, or sorry, three signals and tell you which sector you should be at in order to start switching your motor so it behaves like BM, PMDC. And that's it, the next experiment. So, if we, yeah, just do that. So we want to do overmodulation. So what we're going to show you now is pretty much what I show you as a second simulation, I think with all those um, waveforms of the current, which is really the result once you just apply Hall effects and use your BLDC as, as PMDC. And then as a third experiment, we're going to show the current control. So you see how that looks like and how you can improve the performance. Everything that I just showed you, we're going to uh, present here with the hardware. Any questions? Hmm? Has anybody worked with build DCs before? No. Okay. 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 That's usually how, <clears throat> when you start understanding the three-phase AC machines, that's the easiest step. Because pretty much everybody understands DC machines, right? It's fairly simple. So, in order to make tra easy transitions from DC to three-phase AC, it's easy to go through BLDC and understand the, the constraints and limitations of BLDC and say, okay, why am I doing like this? I can't even do better than this. And then you do it in a DQ eventually as a holy grail in the industry, right? And that's pretty much next few lectures on PM synchronous machines going to be about DQ system. And again, this is pretty much similar to what we did for Induction is going to be applied to PM synchronous. But you definitely should know about BLDC because most of you, whoever start working in industry, that will be required. It's very important. All those uh, hobby projects where you're building the electric bike, scooters, they're all using BLDC. They're all using BLTC. Why? Because it's only three wires for whole effect sensors. You will see for PM synchronous, you have to know the position of the rotor. If you are off, you feel it. <laughs> the torque is really going all around the place. An encoder has, if it's 10 bit encoder, it has 10 plus 2, 12 wires. What if it, one is off? You are done. You are done, right? So it's very kind of a um, detailed design, you have to have all hardware sorted out. If something happened, then you don't have a backup. Here it's very robust, right? Okay? So let's see. Need it help? Oh, current probe, that's true. So we're going to put a current probe. So you see the current waveform and see how it's matching with the simulation that I showed. Okay, let me show that. So I can put it on any of the phases, huh? Phase A. Oh. 
Okay. Okay. Try to spin it. Yeah, just tune it. There you go. See that? This is our. Let me just do it like this. That's fine. Just bring it down slightly. Where is it? So, what do we have over here? Is the current waveform. Awesome. Uh, I can't even make it bigger so they see it properly, right? Do you see it okay? So this is our current waveform. If you are just applying simple logic from your Hall effect sensors and just running it through the microcontroller that is controlling the switches. So this is pretty much your PMDC drive at this point, the same performance. And you see that uh, uh, current ripple that I showed in the simulation, right? So this is not accepted because pretty much, pretty much the problem is that here, Whatever you see for this sector, you have in all six sectors. And what's the effect? The effect is that that's your torque ripple. Significantly high. And we said, wow, no, we don't want that. We definitely don't want that. Um, now for significantly higher speeds, that, that kind of goes down. So there's still some applications where this is just used without any current control. And those are the, the CD drives. They are running at significantly high speed so and there is pretty much very low load so they don't have current control they just do it like this right but now the point is that we have to move from this to the regular current control that we want to have you want to show the switches switching signal oh that's actually not bad how can you do that can you, can you just be careful yeah okay let's show them that that's a good point that's a pink one? Okay. Okay, good. Well, you have to you have to move your hand from the screen. Okay, there you go. Okay. Perfect. Good point. So, what Yusuf is showing us right now is the result of that simple Hall Effect uh, sensor logic. So, all we do is we are sensing which, which uh, switches should be on, which should be off. And you see there is no PWM within the sector. It's just constantly on or constantly off. And that's why it is matching very well with the blue line, with our current. So this is exactly how you move from BLDC to PMDC. See that? Now you can apply duty over there. Remember that slide that I had? You can just end your six signals that are going toward the switches and end them with your PWM and change the duty. So you will have a duty within the sector, but that will not substantially change the performance. You will still have a ripple in other worlds, right? Okay? So the very next step, pretty much the holy grail, is just to make that uh, hysteresis band and so show you. Hmm? yellow one here, you can see it's the higher switch of the phase A. It's like turning on and off in the higher switch. And the purple one over there is the lower switch. So we call it one, usually, in the phase A switch. And the purple one is the switch two, in that sense. As you see, if the direction of current is positive, then the switch in the high is also positive over there. Yeah, that's a good point, because this is now motoric mode. If you want to run generating mode, what would you do? You would just bring the signal that should go to switch to higher switch, you will just bring it to the lower and the other way around. And you'll have the current building up in reverse, right? Right? Remember that slide that I showed you about motoring and generating? That's exactly how you do it. Okay? Do you follow so far, right? No questions? This should be simple. I mean, it's just going slow so you really understand the logic. So eventually, if you need, you can build it yourself. It's easy, I mean, those drive, those uh, machines, they cost maybe like 100, 150 bucks. All you need to do is just build the hardware. It's three-phase inverter with current sensors in three phases. And, of course, the controller, right? But it's really easy to build it. Okay? 
So let me help you with that. So the, the third test we want to do here is uh, we want to load the, the machine so you really see the phase current being flat and everything loaded so we generate some torque. So you really see how, what is the band, the hysteresis band over there, right? And then we're going to change the speed and see if the, the ripple is higher or lower and see how is everything going on with the, with the drive. Hmm? You want to keep it like that? Oh, nice. Okay, perfect. Let me just do it like this. Okay, perfect. So this is our current control. See the, the band over there? It's maybe what, like 10-15%, right? You can play with that. You need to have very high switching frequency to have a bandwidth, and you just have the ability to change that band within the controller. But we made it high so you see how really the hysteresis current control looks like. And the, the yellow and the pink signals are actually the signals that are leaving controller going toward the switches, right? Right? So if we dive in, let me just uh, zoom in. So if you zoom in, this is what you would see, right? This is the effect of your uh, hysteresis regulator. There was a question about that. Now you see. Whenever you have your reference higher than the, than the measured current, what's happening? You switch uh, off. <laughs> <laughs> you switch on off, that's true. <laughs> but at that point, what is switch, on or off? If your actual current phase current is higher than your reference, what should you do? Off. off, exactly. That's when diodes are conducting, and that's exactly off over there. And you see, let's actually zoom in a little bit more, and you see that your current is going down, see? See, whenever the switch is off, your current starts diminishing in the value. Whenever it's on, it starts building up the value. Right? You want me to choose different sector where we have the positive current? Let's see. Let's see. Let's do it like this. Maybe it's easier to follow. See it now? Is it easier to understand? On, building up current. Off current is coming down in the valley. As easy as that. Very simple. And one is the upper switch, another is lower switch. It's easy to figure out which one is what, right? Right? Cool? That's great. That's great. So, Josh? You want to talk about synchronous rectification? No, we don't have a time for that. So you don't actually need the lower switch in this application? True. True. But this is, okay, that's fine. So this is pretty much what we wanted to show you with the setup. And once again, that's, that's ultimately what BLDC drives are used for. Current history is control. And again, if you go to that uh, torque speed curve, you can switch it off, thanks. If you go back to that uh, torque speed curve, you will see that if you need to reach the speeds that are higher than rated, you can feel big in it. But again, you need encoder for that. And once you have encoder, it's easier to move on to the next level, which is DQ control that Yusuf will talk about on Monday. But I just want you to have a feeling of how you, why you need to go to DQ, right? Once you really require high performance, high dynamics, then you have to leave BLDC and just move on. Okay? Any questions? So phase weakening would be you're shifting this the pulse width, the time when you're turning the switches on, uh, outside of the 
the um, sector. Armature current, I mean voltage, the EA. Are you asking about phase advance? Yeah, field weakening. So pretty much what you would have to do is see that, uh, for example, yellow PWM, yeah. you have to move it toward left. Yeah. So you have to start building current before your back EMF reaches its maximum, right? It's trapezoidal, so it starts, you know, so rising up until it reaches its maximum. So you have to build up the current before that, ahead of the curve. And that's how you essentially... Uh, you saw that on that torque speed graph. You essentially don't have high torque capability, but you can increase the speed significantly. You don't have torque capability just because your torque is current times back EMF. And if your back EMF is not maximum, you, you're not going to get the rated torque. It's logic, logical, right? So you're not going to get really high torque performance, but speed-wise, you can really significantly increase the speed of the drive. Okay? Any other questions? Good enough? Yeah, a couple of things I want to say. Let me just give you this, sorry. You can see here is the commutation point, right? Because there is a gap over there. So at this point here, you can see there is a gap. This is mainly because of the commutation. This is phase A current, of course, but uh, the phase A current is shared between B and C. At the instance of commutation, let's say phase A current was turn, turning back to the source through the phase B, then you are making a commutation, it continues to continue going to the C. So you can see this commutation point here. Secondly, I want to say, you can see when the high switch is switching, there is also low switch switching, which we talk about, which we didn't talk about during the lecture. This is mainly because the MOSFET drivers we are using. We are using a bootstrap MOSFET drivers here. So before turning on the high switch, you have to turn on the low switch so they can charge, the, they, they can have enough charge to be used for the high switching. You can, if you look at the longer time frame here, as you see, when we are switching the low only, there is nothing for high. But when we are switching, we need to switch high, we need to switch to low so that we can switch high switches on the bootstrap technique right now we are using. So, not to confuse here, I would like to say. Yeah. Any, okay, questions? Any, any questions? Okay, cool. Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. You can, you can come in and ask us a bunch of questions regarding the hardware if you want. But at this point, the lecture is up. Thanks. Good, sir. Wow. Good, sir. So if anybody wants to see the hardware, you can come, ask questions. Thank you.